<laughs> hey y'all we're back season 14 episode 10 i almost got that backwards because then we'd be really in trouble yeah. uh and yes <laughs> uh we're here we made it somehow to the end well not the end of the show but the end of the season and uh we're gonna go around and introduce ourselves but uh i want our guest the amazing jasmine to go first <laughs> hi i'm that bronze girl <laughs> I'm really bad at intros. Um, I play D and D, and I'm here because uh, Tanya invited me, and I love all the wonderful people on the show. A bam. However, uh, I'm the bad guy today. So. What? <laughs> That's the most information that we have gotten so far about why Jasmine is here. Yeah. So oh, now I have Great to change intro, everything phenomenal. about my plan for today. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's unfortunate that my first time on Rivals, I am here to thwart you. <laughs> <laughs> we love oh, a good there, I, There's a joke off, in there somewhere. Uh, they're off the after party <laughs> list at Troll Skull. Got it. Okay. Wow. Right. Honestly, yeah. that's what being friends with me is like. Like, I'm like, hi, I'm your friend. I'm yeah. going to make your life harder, but not never meaning to. And that's really, you all have gotten the real bronze girl friendship experience now. I like that. You're not going to grow from the strike <laughs> intentionally, but make Wow. Yeah. Uh, hi, I'm Latia, and I'm scared. <laughs> uh, I will be playing uh, everybody's favorite murder bird monk who's never murdered anyone. Uh, Dahani, uh, the Aarakocra monk. Uh, yeah, that's me. Um, my pronouns and hers are she, her. I forgot how the, I know the show goes. because I just did this a week ago. <laughs> There's an outlier now, so I don't know. I know. Uh, <laughs> what am I going to do with the rest of the team? <laughs> I don't know. Sharif. Hey, uh, I'm Sharif, everybody. Uh, I'll be playing Shaka, uh, Tiefling Celestial Warlock. Uh, he, him, i he, him as well. Um, also expert negotiator and uh, zombie yes. friend. Uh, <laughs> well. <laughs> okay. I'm just, you know well. what, I'm just, I don't know what to do with that. You um, <laughs> uh, Hi, everybody. Uh, I'm Okenio. I'm DM Jazzykeds. I am playing Kent, our Phantom Tiefling, Phantom Rogue Tiefling. Oh, one day I'll do it right. Mm -hmm. It's been six seasons. It's fine. Like, how long? How long have we been doing this? <laughs> long enough. 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Yeah, this is like six seasons. Season, yeah. <laughs> and there was a movie in there, you know? <laughs> six seasons in a movie. We had an OVA. Oh, okay. Sorry. Um, uh, hi. Hi. I, uh, I am Brian. I am playing Virgil, your SMR Storm Sorcerer. Virgil's pronouns are he, him, mine are he, they. It's that and simple. Okay. I'm just saying. Wow. I'm being so mean to you and you're no, right dude, now. Like... Yeah. And setting and, me up to fail. Well, so season 14 finale of Kent and, Vir Kent and Virgil divorce is what happens. That's yeah. really bad. Oh, Masood. Not. Hey everyone, I'm Masood. I play Gosdrick Nomrad, everyone's favorite socialist businessman, Druid Construct. Uh, and we both have pronouns of he, him, his. And I'm your DM for the last time this season and of the show probably. And I don't know if I should be glad or worried that this energy has come together, but I'm Tanya Seifert here. Uh, my pronouns are she, her. I usually play Lisa Storio and her girlfriend, Faye. Their pronouns are she, her, and then I'm all your NPCs, so let's see what happens. And with that shenaniganry out of the way, uh, let's do some ad reads. Oh, wonderful. Hey, we want to thank the folks who make us sponsor, uh, possible to do the show every week, and we want to give special thanks to the sponsors that make our game more or so awesome. We use our digital character sheets by D&D Beyond. We have a legendary bundle giveaway in chat. You got to be here live for it, so be sure to get in on that. Our dice trays and vaults are provided by Wormwood. Use the code RIVALS for free domestic shipping at wormwoodgaming.com as Latia is so beautifully displaying some of their craftsmanship. It's really nice. Um, we're also proud to be sponsored by Die Hard Dice. Check them out at dieharddice.com and use the code RIVALS for 10% off. I almost said 15, but no, it's 10. Uh, just so you know. Uh, and then we, for all your geeky gear, you got to check out Stormcrow. You go to shop.stormcrow.com and you can get your nice nerdy swag that you need for the holiday season. If you're looking for a last minute holiday gift, Stormcrow has the perfect thing for the nerd in your life. Uh, and use the code RIVALS on their checkout. For 15% off, we circled back to that. And if you want to sound, oh, so silky smooth, like the Rivals crew, 
Blue microphones is your only option. Go to crew.bluemic.com slash rivals, and we'd appreciate any uh, purchasing that you do, maybe still for the holidays. Uh, we get a little kickback from that, and that would be great. We are partnered with Idol Champions, you know that, from Codename Entertainment, and we're excited because all the rivals are now available to play in Idol Champions. You've got Kent, you got Virgil, you can get Shaka, Solis, Tahani, Gosrick, as well as Disco, a Pest, and Fen, all as familiars. Uh, they're stacking multipliers. Be sure to unlock them all for an incredibly powerful team. And for a final sponsor of our show, we want to throw it over to Eugenio to talk a little bit about voice mod. Oh, you're muted in. Eugenio is not here today. Oh, God. I am here from a planet in wild space. We just watched the rivals go by and they told us about voice mod. You can go to voicemod.net and sound just like me. I'm programmed into the service. It's me. It's actually my voice. I wasn't paid for it. And uh, we're still in litigation, but it's it's fine. You should definitely not, because uh, we're sponsored by them, and they're good, and it's fine. Uh, go to voicemod.net, and you can use code RIVALS. To, I've killed the cast, it's fine. Uh, you can use code RIVALS to get a discount and, and send the RIVALS a, a little tiny bit of that money, which maybe they'll send to me, since they use my voice. Uh, and Alien, it's fine. Voicemod.net. <laughs> We did Soul the clap was the only response I had, and it was incredible. Oh my gosh! <laughs> oh, I counted the number of its fines. It was yes. Six. <laughs> I know that was like an alien code. There was like something <laughs> in there. Wow. <laughs> wow. I, okay. Okay. <laughs> Oh, we I haven't like even that. started rolling dice yet. No, no, no. For any sponsors in the future, we may occasionally start some salacious <laughs> litigation. Listen, with you. nothing we have said is any worse than some of the other DD podcasts I listen to on their ad reads. So. Absolutely. <laughs> if anything, it's good for us. Not wrong. Not wrong. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> All right. And I think with that, uh, Lithia, it is your go. And since we have uh, the bronze girl with us, please explain the whoosh. Give me a minute. <laughs> wow, we broke her so hard. We uh, have to wait to uh. Okay, okay. Okay, I'm good. I'm good. Oh. I didn't I didn't think it was gonna hit me that hard. Wow. Okay. Anyway. We haven't um, even started. Oh my I God. know. Oh, okay. All right. Jasmine, welcome to Rivals. You are the first guest to whoosh with us. Uh, it's great. So basically, uh, it's our previously because, you know, every show goes previously on insert name of show and then there's a whoosh that takes you into what oh, happened. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. And so we do that whoosh. So you're going to go like that when I when I say whoosh. Um, sure. Probably the fastest I've ever explained how to how to do the whoosh. Yeah. Um, but everybody get your whooshing apparatuses ready, your hands, your shoulders, your arms, all that stuff. Jasmine's got the spirit. Mm -hmm. All right. Right. Previously, like all right. I'm so that's so good. Previously on Rivals of Waterdeep. Whooshing. Oh, you just where did that that come from? <laughs> well, intergalactic we are not yeah. cutting those royalty checks now. <laughs> <laughs> I just realized that I could have been using voice mod to get really epic with the previouslys, and oh, this has oh, been yeah. such a missed opportunity Listen, next season. Next we got season. it. Thank you. Thank you for letting me know. Uh, so you all had a little bit of adventure last week. Yeah. What did you all realize? Spent most of it on a ship. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you did. But you had some interesting conversations on that ship. And we got a ship. Like, I mean, that's that's where the episode yes. started. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, Is I mean, it... getting sh uh, shocked well, out of jail. Yeah. Was, it, mm. it started with a sidebar from Gazerk that mm. um, the uh, finest oh, legal no. mind thank on you. the Rock of Brawl. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you. Was not mm -hmm. Gazerk, and probably <laughs> bad that I mentioned the oh. finest legal mind's name in conjunction with Gazerk. But it was a really, really good performance. It hey, was. I don't think there's been a what? better. I, hey, there's a foot. There was. I rolled a nat yeah, twenty on my. Well, that's, that's true. That's, that's true. <laughs> I I don't think any courtroom has ever any any courtroom or bailiff or adjudication has ever had to deal with literally bringing a piece of evidence back from the dead. Yeah. 
to help yeah. solve the case. So what I, you murder, got me there. Your Honor? What you got murder? me there. The case that had already been closed. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> also, <laughs> that you didn't have to do um, any of that. We have a blank check. Yeah, but uh, it's I, fine. So we got Chaka out of jail. Yes. Uh, yes. Uh, totally thanks to Gosrick. Uh, and then got on the picked ship. It's a very yeah. pretty dragonfly ship. Because, damselfly? Because right. they let damselfly, sorry, yes. Yeah. Because they let Kent pick it. Uh, and then we headed home. And on the way home, we had a conversation that was a variation of a conversation that I feel like a lot of uh, adventuring groups have. Uh, it was not, are we the bad guys? But mm -hmm. it was... Does our existence encourage the bad guys? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. Are we good for the place that we call home or not? Mm -hmm. I don't know that we. Decision? I don't know that uh, we well, did. We were also really sleepy when we were having it, so <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, you know. <laughs> but you said you got sleep on the ship. No, like we as a cast, we did the whole sleepover <laughs> oh. thing the night before. <laughs> oh, okay. Remember? Yeah. yeah. It, was still no. at, it, was at, it was at PAX Hangover. We're still, yeah. we're still experiencing it a week later. Well, it's um, uh, yeah, we talked a lot about the reasons. We're, we're pretty sure that Laryl Silverhand is involved in whatever's going on. Mm -hmm. And uh, Kent in particular, although a few other folks I think agree with Kent, like find it hard to understand why Laryl would suddenly oppose us in this way, unless it really was genuinely because she thought that the good of Waterdeep, like Waterdeep would be better off without the rivals. Right. And that mm. is, was a tough pill for the group to swallow. In fact, mm. we haven't yet entirely. We mm. talked about like, why didn't she talk to us? What's really going on? What precipitated all of this? And we have a lot of questions, but like, I'll speak for Kent and say like, there's, there's serious consideration about whether or not this this home and this work is actually better for us. Being there was there. also the counterclaim that maybe someone is trying to weaken Laryl's like grasp on Waterdeep, and we happen to have been some formidable warriors in their pocket. Um, so at their dispatch, kind of in a certain capacity, um, and. No one took that as seriously as Gosrick, which is fine. I'm okay with that. Uh, but I, I, I think, yeah, I, I think there's a way in which we just don't also know what Laryl's intentions are if yes. they were involved in it. The, the yes. truth we can trust is that Laryl always moves in defense of the city, and like mm -hmm. that, yes. yes. And said that to our face, like right. said that there was right. nothing that she would not do to keep Waterdeep to protect Waterdeep and keep it safe. Mm -hmm. which is why that's that's that makes the hard conversation is like are 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 we the problem is is it me am i the drama is it, is it like, <laughs> oh no oh no oh no the drama yeah i'm listening to t swift i got it yeah no uh, yeah also also uh very importantly we left a fully armed uh uh, ship in the uh, oh my god yeah in the, in the outskirts of uh water deep though we did have a sentient. conversation yeah She's yeah sentient. exactly sentient ship that, that we named rival mm -hmm. yeah um yeah uh but but like it's uh you know it's hidden it won't attack unless provoked um but the idea that we now have access to this spaceship mm -hmm. is uh I know, at least for Shaka, that's Fine. pretty cool. He, yeah. He, yeah. There might be some joy rides if. Uh... <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I, gotta, I gotta give you all keys to the ship now? Oh, no. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> no, I, I think that time spent in Avernus and in Rebel's End has really got to Shaka, and you just don't know how deep it goes. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, we, we, we landed Rival um, in a clearing outside town about like mile a eh, mile ish do they use to the way did they use metric or imperial yeah, anyway. gregory, I yeah, hope yeah. metric i hope gregory yeah. oh god gregory doesn't know is his <laughs> hand back of his hand so we're not doing distance from gregory um 14 gregory yeah. we we left yeah we left arrival outside the city and we essentially just strolled in like mm -hmm. we kind of decided whatever happens we're going to come back home yeah and you know, not acting as if nothing happened, but yeah, whoever tried to send us away knows that you do that to the rivals of Waterdeep and they just come back. So we are, we are, um, pimp walking right into Waterdeep. Like, I'm sorry, you're what? 
Yeah, you heard I don't him. Know. Yeah. <laughs> I I need like, a visual of this. Let's go. Now. Like, uh, that, it's happening. It is okay. So it's not really the pimp walk. It's more like the craft walk. If you remember the movie The oh, Craft, when they finally oh, feel themselves yes. and they're going through the cafeteria and they're walking in slow motion, it's like, you know, like that is that plus a little bit of Justice League intro. We're you know like we're doing we're doing a sort of an angled phalanx as we go in. I like it. You know, because yeah, okay. we we yes. exude we exude the everyone knows who we are and they know not to mess with us. I like that that is the energy when we just were questioning whether or not we were positive or negative for us. Like, let's make a <laughs> grand statement. As we walk through. I don't think it's intentional. It's not. Uh, it's no, not intentional. It's no. no. Yeah. Um, there's also the fact that none of you questioned how comfortable Sleece was on that throne, or that Faye has been eerily quiet through all of this. Mm. Or did you all just forget Faye was there? No, we no. Honestly, sometimes when Faye doesn't speak, it is easy to forget that she's there. But yeah. wow, good to know. I I need to have the cast list up on the screen. Otherwise, I'm like, wait, <laughs> who's here? Right. Who is who's here um, right now? I I barely remember that we have Fenris with us, and then I feel bad that I forget. And as much as he liked you, and you and Ken. we took poor Fenris to space. This poor poor tire <laughs> wolf. <laughs> Uh, yeah, Fenris will remember that. Uh, <laughs> Once you get back to Troll Skull, mm -hmm. you might leave your present. <clears throat> but I think that's actually, that's basically where we left off was on the walk. Yeah, yeah. we were walking back to town, yes. yes. So, you all get to town, and you notice people are being a little weird. They're They're kind of looking at you all, wondering... Like, oh, oh. Like, it's almost like people expected you to be gone. Oh, interesting. And you also notice Faye isn't with you. When did she hold on, vanish? Hold, hold on. Yeah, thank you. Um, yeah. Because we were all on, we were all on the ship. So did, did Faye? But like, you all got steward? off the ship. Right. Yeah. And um, between between the epic walk from the ship and into town, you lost Faye somewhere. Oh, okay. Okay. Like, All right. It wasn't yeah. like she didn't come I mean, back with us. Okay. Right. Okay. No, no, she no, does yeah. have her own home. She doesn't live yeah. at Troll Skull right. with us. So. Right. But she's, think, done the, she's done the duck out before. And yeah. You know, so yeah, that's fine. I think Gosrick still asks, though, is like when once he's aware of it, is like, oh, Celise, did Faye go back to their own house or are they will they meet us back at Troll Skull later? And Celise looks around, she's like, wait, what? She's concerned because as far as she oh. knew, Faye was coming with them. Oh, no, that's oh. different. That's different. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, she's just like, um, that's weird. And yeah. so... At the, at the least, it could be said that our problems aren't necessarily her problems. So mm -hmm. perhaps it's good that she can have some sort of distance from whatever may happen to us. Mm -hmm. I think so. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, Dahani is gonna make a perception check as they're walking, um, just to kind of see, like, it's it's you know actually no, you've kind of given us the 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 insight that people are not are looking at us like they expected us to not be here. So I'm just gonna make a general perception check to see like who's watching us. Like, is mm. it just like all right townsfolk and stuff like that? Give me a roll. Um, my dice have betrayed me. That's a thirteen. Don't don't say that to me. Don't say that a thirteen is a betrayal. It is. I it's mean, thirteen is not going to get you much. It's just it's that weird, almost like feel after you became mass lords, where you just wondered, is someone watching us because they know we're mass lords? Are they watching us because of like the building joke building? Is it like in that weird post building joke building destruction and? the start of kind of cleaning up the town six months later. It feels oppressive and I don't like it. Yeah, it is. It is. Okay, cool. Maybe we hurry home. Yeah, let's pick up our pace a little bit. Yeah. No sense. Um, and while you pick up your pace, we're going to actually go to where Faye is. And uh, DC, will you change the overlay, please? Whoa. Um, bronze. One well, told Laryl. Uh, there's a knock on the it's door. Me, girl. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Um, so, Laryl, you are, you know, you're doing your thing, whatever open lords do in Waterdeep. I'm doing and, my makeup. Okay. In your office? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, I, actually, I love that for Laryl. My silver mm-hmm. hair, which looks black right now, but really it's silver. All right. Other than silver hair, what what is what does our Laryl look like? Um, for sake of laziness and, and huntiness, she looks like me. All right. I'm not hair. mad at it. Yeah. But like e girlified version of me. So like an excessive oh, no. amount of flesh and little stars along the cheeks and an overpriced lip oil that she saw trending in the water deep market. Okay. Mm-hmm. Um, your assistant announces Faye, who she is a drow artificer, you know, dressed in tools for trade, you know, looks a little bit concerned, almost kind of checking to make sure that no one saw her come to your office. So uh, there is an artificer at your door. What would you like to do? Are you here to do my nails? And she pulls her head back. No, I'm not here to do your nails. It's me. Oh, hey. sorry. You just had so many bottles. I thought maybe some of them were of nail polish. And she just gives you the real kiss look like. Come on now. How, how can I help you, darling? She sits down and she just kind of looks at you. Well, they're back. They weren't supposed to come back. I know. Why did you not prevent their coming back? There's six of them and one of me. This is where one employs Sutterfuge. I'm an artificer. I make noise wherever I go. I have vials and potions. Hmm. Also, have you met Solis? True. There are many words used to describe such a person, the top of the list being stubborn. Not just stubborn, dangerous. Fair. And as it is, whenever we have to take this to their doorstep, it's going to be an interesting conversation I get to have with her. How so? Um, You know, the whole... I'm her girlfriend, and I show up with you. Right. That's, and they, I think they know that you're involved somehow. Right. Betrayal, that whole thing. I, I don't, fall, how is it more awkward because you are fornicating? <laughs> we need to talk about you and your definition of relationship. That's not all it is. You know, emotions. Right. You, I forget you don't do those very well. Roll I that understand back. the concept vaguely. That's very clear in this conversation. The, what are we going to do about them? Give me three reasons why the rivals, why Waterdeep would benefit from the rivals being here. I'm on your side. Why would I give you those? Exactly. This is my point. You cannot think of any. I cannot think of any. Therefore, my solution is rather simple. If we have them leave in a less than permanent way, much like the ant is drawn to the donut upon the floor, they continue to return. Therefore, their removal must be one that is more permanent for the good of Waterdeep, emotions aside. Now, if you would like to barter with me that maybe one of these people has spared my wrath, perhaps I can make that happen. I don't know that that would work because the minute that I show up at your side, Sleece is probably going to want to kill me. I could shield you from Selyse if this is your main concern. But if your main concern is of the heart, she like turns to her assistant. (laughs) What? Mayhaps a glass of wine and a pint of ice cream 
would heal your heart after such an altercation? You're saying that like my heart's still going to be beating. That's that's amazing. You know, we're going to let you get your nails done. I'm going to work with your assistant to make a plan. And then I'm going to go back and see what they're up to. Because I've got my own home. Hopefully they don't think anything's amiss. I don't, I didn't go back with them to Troll Skull. Can I make a roll? Sure. Using maybe my insight to see if I would know that they, whether or not the, the group would think something's amiss or if I would have some insight as to sure. like, you know, whether I think Just, it's a good idea. Sure. Or you can see if Faye is possibly either lying or nervous and making it up as she goes along. Yeah. Okay. Much like your DM. <laughs> Uh, I got a 19 on the die with my modifier. That's a 27. Oh, Faye is quaking in her boots because she's mm -hmm. sure that if Celise doesn't kill her, mm -hmm. then you'll probably kill her mm. for failing. They're there. Are you patting her like on the head? Yeah. They're there. Um, worry not your heart. Um, your friends will most assuredly try to kill you. Of this, I have no doubt. But maybe I can give you something to let me know when they draw their blades and maybe I can arrange some sort of emergency exit for you. All right. I mean, I can fight as well. It's just more of a... Now, it's... you don't have to worry about me killing you. I don't? No. Your betrayal of your party lets me know that your priorities are in order. Now, if such a time were to come that you were to expose to them the truth or let them know that I've been moving against them, then of course I would have to have you unmade into your base components, which would be rather painful and horrible. But I mean, seeing as such a time has yet to come, I see no reason for our friendship to end. Oh, uh, as an artificer, I can, I can appreciate that threat. I'm just going to go back to Troll Skull and keep an eye on them until you decide to um, make their exit permanent. Right. And Good you luck won't warn them. them of that. No. Why would I? I've been with them for months, almost a year. Why would I do that? Because you mentioned something about the emotional attachment, and now I, now I feel as though maybe you would, you know, would cloud your judgment. I have attachment to one of them, all well, two if you count the dire wolf. Dire wolf. The dire wolf is cute. Fair. All right, you do whatever it is you're doing, and I'll see you at the manor shortly. Sounds good. You know, after this is all over, you should come by and also get a facial and your nails done because you look very stressed and I think you would really enjoy it. Sure. That, if you survive. That, you're so reassuring, Laryl. So reassuring. I've heard this many times in my long life. Great. And she's just like, it's like in the office, she just shuts the door. And it's like, this is my last day on Faerun. That's what she's thinking as she leaves. And uh, we're going to go back to the rivals who you've gotten back to Troll Skull. Hopefully you've got a chance to relax. I'm sure Duo is there trying to like feed you all. Is it still and... standing? Yeah, yeah. Can we? Is it still there? Yeah, yeah when it's we still first there. Out. Okay. Terrific. Yeah, no one... I mean, Troll Skull is still a place of business, no matter who owns it. Mm -hmm. And remember, there were clients, there were people coming into the place even before the rivals took it over. Right. Okay. So Troll Skull's like, still there. I don't like the way you said whoever owns it. Okay. Um. 
I'm just um, so I mean, still bu- so plans. people people are still businessy yeah. businessy people are still businessing. I don't I don't yeah. know words anymore. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Okay, are, the, are the people clientele. there? Are the people there also looking at us like they're surprised to see us? Um, they're a little surprised because Duo and Brian make such a big deal out of you returning because mm-hmm. it's actually mm-hmm. been a while since you were absconded with, right? Mm-hmm. And they like there was no note, there was no nothing other than Celise and Faye leaving looking for you all no one knew where you actually were all this time so they didn't know if you'd abandoned them if you'd been killed it's just kind of oh oh you're back and they realized okay well felice is back but the artificer is not with them Mm. so there's this kind of just like wariness about you returning suddenly after being gone quite a while for sure uh, Can I uh, yeah. chat with Brian and Duo, uh, just like about how uh, things have been running? Sure. Yeah. Yeah, I'm gonna have to do this voice. Uh, um, go ahead. Uh, hey, Brian, Duo, thank you so much. Um, I just how has it been at the manor since we've been gone? I know we didn't leave a note, and that's honestly like one of the few things I'm known for. Um, more importantly, Brian, how's Nimrod's been? What does the management portfolio look like since we've been gone? And Brian just kind of tilts its head at you. I've been more concerned with keeping the place running. Okay, okay, okay. Um, that is hard to hear because I did, I did make you chief executive officer in all you dealings did? when I'm not there. Yes, we. Okay, Brian, I will go over the reports on the investments and how things have been going for the management firm while you've been gone. Uh, well, we've been gone. How have things been at the manor then, since that has been the primary uh, priority? Have we had any issue with our security system? Things have been in place. And Duo kind of pops up on a stool, and he's got a folder, and he flunks it down in front of you, Gosrick. Yeah. I know I know you love Brian, but i kind of been doing stuff since he didn't really do what he's supposed to do. Maybe I should be CEO. You know what, Duo? That is an excellent conversation to have. <laughs> and perhaps we can have that at a later date. I will say I both <laughs> admire and am intimidated by the ruthlessness you just threw Brian under that bus. The quickness that you said that I could do your job is impressive and also a little scary for a business manager. I've been running this place without you for a long time before I even knew you. Remember, it was one of you that made me a ghost. The least you could do. You, you're right. You're right, Brian. Uh, and Duo, thank you so much for your input. Um, I'm just going to take the folder and look at the books. Uh, and then, Rivals, should we uh, circle up kitchen and, and chat a little bit? Or? We have an office. Why don't I mean, portal to Avernus aside? Why don't I mean? I mean, there is food in the kitchen. We just have our best. We have our best discussions in the kitchen. We do have our okay. We have our best discussions in the kitchen. You're right. Also, I can't wait to see that folder. And it's like Duo has been like since the bankruptcy business. Duo has been just like perfect. It's like. I didn't want to mention is impressed. (laughs) Yeah. I didn't want to say anything. I was like, yeah, I remember when you were running it. I had to come in and get you all out of the red. Like I I totally, it's okay. Okay. (laughs) Okay. Okay. (laughs) All right. Kitchen meeting. Kitchen Kitchen meeting. meeting. Let's do it. All right. What are you all doing? Uh, Salise is with you. Mm -hmm. And, you know, she starts, she goes and makes herself a drink, not a drink drink, but like tea or something. Yeah. Yeah. So, do we still have the uh, Moonbeam anti doppelganger security system oh, in yeah. place? Because we've been away and we've been captured and separated and blah blah blah. And I think that would be a first order of business for Kent is just to like have everybody go through it real quick. Well, that's right. over the front door, right? Yeah, yeah I couldn't remember how we set it permanently yeah, on or in various bits of lighting and yeah. you know, so okay. yeah, people. Cool, cool, cool. As coast to addendum B for the doppelganger protocol instituted in the rivals uh, <laughs> manifesto <laughs> upon arriving after we a 10 days away, Gregorian or otherwise mm-hmm. from the, uh, the manor, one must induce in a moonbeam shower to assure okay. any concern of uh, doppelganger shenanigans are not at play. Right. 
And so I think that, that we all we all understand that a bit. Okay. okay. Uh, um, so, I mean, do we talk to her? Do we reach out? Do we go to Mert? We talked about maybe going through Mert. Oh, God. I... And it's my reaction to murder yeah, every time too, but yeah. it does feel like Megan. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, I just let out a huge. I let out a huge sigh. When yeah, Kent is literally like, no, no, no. I get it. I do. <laughs> um, I mean, we'll have to go find him a new bottle of wine just to get him to talk to us. But mm. oh no, we only have one episode left. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Fair I mean, so we still have some Milchimber in the. Yeah, yeah, we, yeah, we held yeah. on to some. Are you sure? Are you sure nobody drank it? What were you saying, Shaka? It, it's just really hard to get to Laurel. Like, even if we did yeah. want to, mm -hmm. we can't just waltz in there. Like, last time, mm. obviously, there's an assistant, there's appointments. Uh, we yeah. can go and try, but... Um, even as her best friend, I have much difficulty making appointments Kaz with Laurel. Kazrik, listen, I didn't want to bring it up, but it what? does feel like like we're going to have to have some serious conversations with her about, like, our presence in the city, and I just... Do you know if that best friend status goes both ways? I just don't want that to be the moment. You know how what I mean? You and I don't me. mean no. How yeah, dare, how dare I, you now listen. Our, I get no, it. This is this is for your. This is about your protecting your feelings. I don't in this. doubt you. I just mm. it sort of suddenly became a thing that you said, and I want. I just want like like Verge said. I just want to <laughs> make sure that you're okay. Great things about really good friendships is that you can stand moments of conflict and hopefully come out stronger. Mm. And also, I will say it again. I think someone is trying to undermine Laryl's position in Waterdeep. And oh, we're her best supporters. I, listen, I hope that you're right about that. I do. I, yeah. That part. I mean, whichever um, one ends up being correct, we should still talk to her, though, right? Like, that wouldn't be. Oh, I think so. Sure. Sure. Mm -hmm. we're talking. Yeah. I guess what uh what time of the day is it? Is this like the is it appropriate to going, go now? <laughs> it's like you know not it's four like, a.m. Yeah, <laughs> let's go see just her. Just uh, just send her what you doing? I'm like, sure this is yeah. fine. Hello. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> oh no. At the window with rocks. <laughs> <laughs> you up? You you hear a rock at the window? Hello. <laughs> oh. oh hello. Oh, you're not you're knocking. Yeah, mm. I'm throwing oh. rocks at their window. I love that. You think the same. I love yeah. who's out oh. there. You oh. open a window or a door. Hello. I'm I mean, throwing rocks and I'm saying, it. hello, um, rivals, tis I, Laryl Silverhand. Did, this is Are you I did anyone <laughs> summon her? What happened? We I, we should either be very afraid or not look this gift horse in the mouth. And I just, I don't know what else to do other than let, her, have in. To let her in and, and have her go through the protocols. Of course. Okay. So she goes but, through the, like have her come through the front door. But, uh huh. I mean, it's okay, automatic. I'm gonna, right? Yeah. It's automatic. Yeah. It's automatic. Um, I'm going to leave out the back door. Actually, there was something I wanted to do. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. 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 So uh, uh, keep in touch to honey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Where do you want that have. message? Uh, uh, Zoom, please. Zoom? Okay. Square. Everyone All right. Art artificer and just starts vanishing. Like, <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, I'll go, level. I'll sort of point out the window towards the front door. We'll meet you out front. Yeah, yeah. I think we yeah, virtual, the window. Virtual yeah. will go out. Virtual will, like, basically go out front to... Yeah, that's... Mm. Mm. Mm -hmm. It's fine. Mm. Yeah. It's so probably you, fine. You, you go out front, and there's a Laryl that looks uh, just like Jasmine. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> except the e-girl version e -girl. yes i'm sorry the e-girl the e-bronze girl version of <laughs> right, right 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 yeah, yeah with the stars it's a it's a it's a bit of a new stars look since the last time she visited the manor so yeah it's it's fine um is there um you you, you not come in yes yes just come yeah just i we're just very clearly flustered by this because there's a lot of thoughts going on right now and no idea what to do with any of them. So, yeah, yeah he, he just kind of motions to to Please. to enter. Oh, yes, I would like to see it, I guess, one last time. Before no I pull it to down that. to its foundation. 
Slight reaction. I'm sorry. What? Mm-hmm. I'm sorry. <laughs> what? The I... just looks is, at you. Is, is, what? Is, is, is there a problem? Well, you, you were not supposed to return. This, <laughs> this was sort of um... like all of the everything is just like melt like it's it's yeah. like the realization that he didn't want has just hit him and he's just like oh you yeah. look sad this is Faye can you Faye can you come explain because this one's getting depressed and that's hard for me to handle no wait wait and through the door comes Faye Faye can you just can you just explain because this one's getting sad and that's um, I do not have the emotional bandwidth. Um, I mage hand it there, there. I, I immediately look at Celise. I immediately turn to yeah, Celise. Uh, I'm, I'm watching Birch, but yeah. Whoa. And Celise is like, shock Pikachu face? <laughs> uh, then, y- yes, I what? think uh, someone had Should better explain. explain. Yeah. And Salise is staring at Faye and Laryl and looking at you all like, uh, I don't know what to do with this. And Faye is just like, okay, look. You all, the rivals, are bad for Waterdeep. You're bad for a lot of people. And in fact, you probably don't remember a lot of the people you've hurt, do you? You walk around here like you own water deep, even get to be mass lords. And you all are not, you're not the heroes we need. I'm actually not interested in hearing from this petty asshole, Laryl. I would love to hear this from you. Yeah. Yeah. Why would my best friend together with you? Enough, Faye. We trusted you. Laryl. We have done nothing but work with you. We've worked with the North Ward to try and protect it more. We understand that occasionally we encourage and bring destructive things to the city, and we do our best to avoid that. Why did you think you couldn't speak to us? Thank you. Well, firstly, I do not do the greatest with um, emotionality, which is why I wanted you all to leave and just not come back. And I am working with my therapist on my conflict avoidance issues. Um, But it seems like it's not working because yet here you are again, walking in with a pimp strut. And I feel as though you never truly learn from your lessons. And it's not it's not personal, Kent. It's really just that I truly care for Waterdeep's best interests. And and doing your best to not be destructive, well, your best isn't good enough. Kent goes from righteous fury to just sunken defeat when Laryl says all of these things that he's so afraid are true. I think... Gosrick looks back at Kent, Virgil, and I just turn to Laryl and say, we've, we've given everything to the city. I took my portion of my dragon, of the dragon's horde, and I invested it in Waterdeep. The, 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 the community is thriving in ways that they've never done before. Sure, sure, there was one incident where a building came, became sentient and attacked. But we solved that within the day. There's no problem that we haven't been responsible for that we ended up being responsible for. We look after our mistakes. We, we handle our, our tragedies. We, I just don't know why you couldn't talk to us. Well, fixing problems you create isn't exactly doing good. And I hope you know that, Gazrek. And ultimately, on the trajectory you're on, because your growth has been impressive, eventually you will create a problem that you can't solve. 
And to be frank, investing in a city in which you have a direct sort of business interest to make sure that your neighborhood thrives isn't exactly being as selfless as you think it is. That's just capitalism, darling. And trust me, I understand that quite well. How? Not the C word. Danny. Oh, Danny. Okay. Let's say it. You, Lero, we're not friends anymore. It's oh, ended. Friendship has ended. We never were. I don't mean... don't feed into their lives. <laughs> the soap opera level. I love this. I, I Gosworth just doesn't know it is fuming and realizes that anything else he says oftentimes is so forward, doesn't care that he makes himself look like an ass. Mm-hmm does not want to be any more embarrassed in this moment. And it's just, for the first time, tight-lipped. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Shaka, he looks at Gazrik, um, looks around everybody, and then looks at Laurel um, and says, <clears throat> I just... And also, he looks around to see if there's anyone, you know, if the other people are still there. Um, oh, you mean like bystanders? Yeah, or people that were. Oh, yeah. yeah, there are people kind of. So, so quick question, just so I know, are, are you all just basically like kind of in front of Charles Manor, or have you invited Laryl inside? My thought was we were inside. We were, yeah, we're okay, inside. so I'm just making sure. Yeah. So, the few people that might have come through for breakfast or were going to check in or kind of stand there with their bag, like, oh, maybe this is a bad time. Okay. <laughs> Because yeah. like Shaka does want to, because like Shaka wants to say something, but not if there's other people around. So um, they can, they, you know what? For the sake of convenience, because this is not something others should hear, probably. Uh, you see, Brian and you are ushering these these non rivals out of the Wait. room. Yeah, get out of here. Um, yeah. So uh, he says, "Why go through the charade of making us mass lords?" I thought that maybe if I coddled your very pathetic need to feel important, that maybe your destructive rampages would end and maybe you would depart from Waterdeep feeling that you have won. Unfortunately, that did not happen. I mean, Faye, as one of you agreed with me that my methods were sound. If one amongst your number has nothing positive to say about you, uh, truly, that is an examination unto itself, is it not? Virgil looks at Solis and then back at Faye. One amongst us? And Solis is just stricken. You have never seen her look this rough except for right after she killed Garage. Mm Hmm. And she's she's just shaking her head, staring at Faye like, how could you? And she looks at you and she's like, he's not one of us. I never said that. And before I you all... I assumed because, you know, they said they loved you. And if someone who loves you cannot think of three positive things to say about you then truly those that hate you could probably think of a thousand bad things to say about you. And you hear Solis. Just. It's it's a noise. It's not a scream, but it's like one of those soul wrenching noises where if you heard it, you would know that it's nothing but pure grief. And she just pulls out her sword and lunges straight for Faye. Because there's nothing that she can say at this moment. Um, Laryl, would you like to intercede or attempt to intercede? Um, no. Wow. Uh, Mm. Conflict avoidance Uh 101. (laughs) Well, she's she's working on it. She's working working on it. 
delivered without wanting to be a part of this mess. And so now that yeah. Faye has put me in this situation, Laryl's like, wow. oh, Yo. Yeah. oh my God, I love it. <laughs> this is a lot. Uh, this is great. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So since it's going to be hard for me to fight against Also, myself, apologies to Tanya having yeah. to do sheet on sheet right now. Like, <laughs> I'm just like, uh, uh, um, well, because it was a surprise attack, I'm going to give Celeste advantage. This is weird. I should, almost want to give someone else's face character sheet. Just want to fight myself. I mean, but you, you, you can. Yeah. I uh, Let me do this because I'm going to just see if I actually hit Faye. I'm going to do it with advantage because yeah. she, she was mm -hmm. expecting it, not expecting to attack. For Celeste to just not say a word, just attack her. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, well. Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, wait. I was looking at the wrong one. Oh, yeah. She stabs her. Aww. Um, but what I'm gonna do... To be fair, Faye, knowing Solis really probably couldn't anticipate any oh. other outcome than yeah. this. In this yeah. Let's be real. What, she was what, terrified of this, yeah. But, but at the same time, you'd imagine that Faye's like, I'm with Laurel. Like, Laurel's got my yeah. back. Like, like, like... Oh, yeah. yeah. Back, there's, but... there's definitely a dawning realization <laughs> on Faye's face, like, yeah. oh... <laughs> yeah, so just so you know, Faye's AC is only 16. No, mm -hmm. okay. Oh, and I, ro I roll with my attack bonus. I rolled a 25. Yikes. Yeah. And I use my Holy Avenger longsword, which is not going to go well for her. Um, wow. That is 18 on Faye. And it's a surprise attack, so I'm just going to double it. Mm -hmm. Faye, mm -hmm. you look up and you see Faye pinned to the wall. Mm, and you gosh. actually hear Celise just very low and very like wounded. I gave you my heart and this is what you do to me and my friends. So while she's distracted with murdering her soon to be ex-girlfriend, what <laughs> would you all like to do? They're, they're having a moment and I, it's like, we should really let them resolve this. <laughs> and she's not going anywhere. I mean, she's pinned to the wall. I have a very mean question to ask. Is Faye uh, dead? Um, she's not dead, but she's hurting. Okay. Um, had I had I called my shot and said through the heart, she'd be dead. Right. But yeah. she is hurting and she is she's basically prone. She is pit Celise just basically went straight through with this with this Avenger sword mm -hmm. yeah. right through. So like a, a little bit to the right, she's going to be dead. Okay. This is a positive and that positive for Laryl. Because, <laughs> oh, <gosh. laughs> oh, you know, no. Celise is now occupied and I've been led to believe that Celise is the most dangerous of the group. So um, the longer Faye stays alive, the better. So I'm just going to sneakily wow. mm. throw a healing word that way <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's helping that is that um, you know, you know that's it's like, that's, and the healing that's, word that's is better a, than the mage hand pat, pat. There, <laughs> but that's the healing that's word <laughs> there there uh let me let me know in 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 uh zoom chat oh gosh that gives all right back. all right uh, um so Salisa kicked it off with attacking Faye. what would you all like to do Laryl, what? I understand your motivation, but was your plan to honestly think that you would send us away from our home and that we would stay away? This isn't your home. You're interlopers. You don't belong here. And it reflects in the actions you all take because if this was your home, you wouldn't risk it the way you do. This is my home. And I thought maybe you could be a part of it. But the fact that it's almost like the city's immune system fights you at every turn. And that leads me to believe that you are a foreign object that must be expelled one way or another. It breaks my heart, too, in theory. Maybe 
she's right. And Kent is just seeing visions of the incident in Caradoon writ large here in Waterdeep. And believes that maybe she's right. Maybe uh, I'll, he'll say, maybe I got complacent after what happened and allowed this place to feel like home. But wherever I go, it ends up, I end up breaking things. So maybe, maybe she's right. You know, Kent, seeing as you're showing so much introspection, um, Faye's position is open. You could <laughs> join me. But this little treehouse club will still need to be dismantled. That more than anything that she has said, just twinges a little tiny bit of something way deep down beneath all of the, uh, what, like self-loathing and self-doubt that Kent's got right now. Can I, I don't know if it's an inside check or, or maybe it's nothing, maybe, but, but is there, what should I do if Kent wonders one more time if this really is the Laryl Silverhand that we've been working with? Um, it could be an insight. Let me look at character sheet really quick. Insight's or fine. perception. No, insight sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, is that, is that is it the better one? Is it the better one? Oh, no, yeah, huh. yeah, okay. Yeah, no, that's good. I see why you I see why you know. <laughs> Could I insight or maybe like insight on that? <laughs> Could I maybe uh all right, let's click the button. Another okay. wisdom based check. Uh, it's, okay. It's a, it's a, a dexterity based check, maybe? No, it's uh, uh it's a 21 insight. Oh yeah. Um, Laryl, does that give, does that give Kent any, any insight? Oh, God. It re and it really is like speech yeah. patterns and like consistency of like oh, things we've talked about, we like have. anything, mm -hmm. because, because all the stuff about Laryl being first and foremost con concerned with Waterdeep rings true. Even the even the like low blow jabs at the rivals, like mm -hmm. I I can see being both true and something she would say because she cares about the city. But asking me to stay and work for after she's just said we're a danger to this place mm -hmm. makes me wonder. Yeah, I think you would see that uh, Laryl is at the end of her rope mm -hmm. in that okay. she's rather fond of you all, which is why, oh, no. uh, despite being not so great for, for her wants, um, she did try to get rid of you in other ways. Mm -hmm. Um, and I guess like, yeah, with, with that 21 or was, was it 21? Yeah. With that mm -hmm, 21, 21 yeah. I think you would know that of the group, she thinks that you're the only redeemable one <laughs> that maybe you could community service off your time with Laryl. <laughs> I don't know whether or not, not oh, this, this is, yeah, this is even so much pair. worse. Yeah, the really sad thing is like, of course, the person who's done the least in this city is I like, know. yeah, maybe you, maybe you're the one. <laughs> well, oh, no. the, he's the least corrupted by Waterdeep. Yeah. 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 Oh, and yeah. it's about to get so much worse seeing that because then Kent just sort of stares at Laryl for a minute. And after thinking that through, just shakes his head and says, no, um, I think, I think maybe that's not, maybe I'm not worth the risk. And you hear Celise don't fall for her lies. You are worth it. I wouldn't have brought you back, wouldn't have brought Virgil back if you weren't worth it. It's, uh, it's not. It's not that I am not worth it or worth something. Virgil, Virgil taught me not to listen to that voice a long time ago. It's just that 
home seems to be a tough thing for me. This is your home. She doesn't get to tell you that. And you see Celise is actually twisting her blade in face. Yes. And you see the way that she's twisting it. Faye's not long for this world. I'm keeping an eye on, on, on that as well, just so you know. On, like, it, it, the moment that it's, like, close, I let me know, because I have some stuff planned. Uh, <laughs> yeah. oh, oh, okay. Um, yeah. S- Celise, Shaka. Is, a little busy here, Virgo. Is there, is there nothing that either of you have to say to her? Is this... Is, is this how we're going you're going to let us be seen as simply trouble that attracts has has anything in water deep happened that would not be vastly worse had you or we not been here yeah. honestly shaka during this has mostly been focused on Celise. um he's been with her and went through that journey of seeing her, you know, um, hurt by Zaraj and finally confronting him. And uh, so he's kind of transfixed on her. Yeah, he's not that he's quite left this conversation, but he's more focusing on making sure that Celise doesn't, that this doesn't like break her, you know, because this is like mm. another like really big wound. Yeah. Um, so he's like mostly focused on that, which is why he hasn't been talking as much. Um, but but he does, especially when he sees Celise start to turn that blade, he he like does kind of like peek a bit back into the conversation, um, and says, "Laurel, do you really believe that Waterdeep was free of conflict before we got here? Do you really believe that if we weren't here, there would be?" no conflict in Waterdeep? Do you believe that the Castlanders wouldn't be worshipping Baphomet and doing all kind of stuff if we were here or not? We took care of that. Do you believe that there wouldn't be murders in Three Daggers Alley uh, with no one even mentioning it? We took care of that. Right? W- would you really believe that, um, that um, there wouldn't be efforts in Candlekeep and Strixhaven that intersected with the city, with the people that you swore to protect here, we helped take care of that. Yes, there was a sentient building involved, but, you know, that's here nor there. Um, The point is, every city has issues, major issues, no no more so than Waterdeep does. And we've really helped to make the city deal with that stuff and thrive. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've had a talk with the people around the North Ward, but you know, we've really helped to build the morale up here. Um, you know, and um Mass Lord or not, that did not affect anything that we've done here. And if you really think that there that we've been attracting trouble here, then I think it might be time for you to step down and you be removed from the city. I agree. Sometimes when there are a lot of snakes in the aisle, you bring in the cat to hunt the snakes. But when the cat has no natural predator, it becomes an invasive species. And that's when it must be called. And I cast mass polymorph yeah. And ah, turn get a cat us. Everyone into a cat. <laughs> oh, okay, okay, but I'm not. I'm not as mad at this as right. I want to be. Yeah. You know? yeah. Like, um, is there a save yeah. against mass polymorph, or yes. it just affects you? Okay. What's it's save? a. It's a wisdom save. Thank goodness. Um, okay. I, I don't want to make the save. I, I want to be I, a tabby. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Right. Uh, tab, I like, tabby. Um, um, I mean, we're all so nervous to click the button. Oh, I, I just got it. Okay, twenty-two. Okay, my save DC is 19. 29. So. Okay, you save. Oh, no. So Celise no. saved. And I, now let's see if Faith Kent's, saved. Kent's a cat. I don't oh, know how that's much so much sadder. It. Celise is stabbing a cat. It's so <laughs> well, much sadder. It, well, I mean, if Faith turns into a cat, she would just fall to the ground. Right. Yeah. I wouldn't, I, we are not harming animals. Thank you. Yeah, no. no. 28. That's what I got. Nice. 
Virgil and Ken uh, both um, not saved. <laughs> so uh, Faye becomes a cat, and in becoming a cat, she becomes small and furry and adorable and gray and drops to the ground, and she's not hurt, weirdly enough, because a cat wouldn't be in the same place as, as she was. And it scurries and like clambers behind you, Laryl, and like is mewing so pitifully. Um, so who is a cat? Just Kent and Virgil, I think. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh my god, you must be the most adorable cat. We're even ever. cuter than we were before. <laughs> so, you know. Yeah, yeah. It's so, it's it's like mini versions of your of your uniforms. Like yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh, they the outfits probably more too. Yeah. <laughs> oh my god. So like the, Kent, yeah. Virgil, and Faye are cats. The honey is not with you. Remember, she snuck yeah, out she, the back. Uh, yeah, she ducked out. Yeah. Yeah. Right, right. Uh, it's actually about this time that Dahani walks in, probably right about the time that Laryl sends out her magic. And she actually walks in with Tilly. Oh, yes. Um, because... The enforcements. That's good. Well, because she had the same idea that Sharif that 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 Sharif who literally just walked out the back yeah, door. I know. Um, I, was, I was like, I'm out of here. Oh, what the hell? Gotta get out of here. No, but like oh. Dahani had thought about yes, Laryl has issues with what we've done, but do the people. Yeah. So when Dahani went out the back, she went to go talk to Tilly to ask if she or anybody that she knew could come and speak for us. And she and Tilly walk in to see uh, cats. I uh, this yeah. I what? And you see Laryl there with a very scared gray cat like behind her. Uh, yeah, but this one isn't as cute, and I pick. <laughs> no. no. I, no. I pick up <laughs> Virgil because it's a cute little uniform, and I'm like. Look at your real cat. Look at your toe so, beans. So Laryl's a cat person, you found out. <laughs> Look at your toe beans. Yeah, Vir- I- Virgil as a cat is doing the absolute, like, the cat has already had one second too long of being held. So yeah, uh-huh. Laryl's, having to, Laryl's having to work for it if she's going to keep doing it. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, uh, I actually grasping Vine Virgil out of Laryl's hand. <laughs> no, no, you do not take the cut of love, friend. No. Why are you being so dickish about this? Oh, okay, okay. Well, hey, buddy, we'll take care of you later. Um, I can't believe this. First off, betrayal on betrayal. You called me the c word, and that is the most hurtful thing that you could have done. And then you turn our friends into cats. What is this? Is this some funny game to you and your power and display that we'll be more? innocent and as these animals yes i mean have you noticed how casually and jokingly y'all say oh except that one time we brought a building back to life so why are we pretending that we're serious now well i mean she's got you there i would say i would say something i learned from the joke building joke building when it was still around is tragedy plus time gives us comedy in the midst of tragedy, there's not enough time for us to laugh at. <laughs> Sorry for our podcast listeners. Uh, you have actually polymorphed into a cat in the Zoom call. Uh, that is not something with- we can actually do. Is it? I don't know. <laughs> a cat with a hoodie, apparently. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's actually <laughs> sweet. It's a long necked cat. <laughs> 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 Oh um, my God. I think um, Dahani like bring like Dahani injects herself into this conversation. Laryl, have you ever actually asked the people what they think about us, or are you just making assumptions based on what you see from your shiny wizards? Oh my God, your shiny wizards tower. Well, let's ask them now. Yeah, I Tell brought one. What? Not I brought one. I brought one, and I can go get others. I'm very fast. Let's go out into the square, yeah. summon everyone, yeah, and by a simple vote determine whether or not I should slay you. I am fair, unlike Celise, who so hold brazenly on, attacked a, a, a poor poor Fay here. I am more than happy to take this to court. 
Uh, Salise is like brazenly attacked. I'm sorry she betrayed me. Oh, so you just go around stabbing everyone that betrays you? What about due process? Listen, I am a force of good in Waterdeep. No, I you're am not. more than happy to give you your due process. And at this, like, now she's trying to pet the other cat that hasn't been taken from her. <laughs> So you're trying to pet uh and, yeah. And, yeah. 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 It's another grasping vine. I'm gonna burn these third level spell slots. I don't care. Uh, <laughs> I need oh, you to man. do uh a sleight of hand to see if you can actually pick up Ken. Because oh, you okay. have you having a cat know how hard it is to pick up a cat that does not want to be held. Oh, that's the wrong thing. Um let me try that again. I have a 16. Uh, does that work against like your your dex Kent, or Kent? Can you talk as a cat? Ow. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. You don't know. Oh no! <laughs> <You gotta> know. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't think that's common. I don't, I don't know how many languages. I don't, I don't know if we speak. Uh, kitten. Ow. Is that a voice mod filter? Or are you just all natural? I can't tell anymore. Uh... <laughs> wow. <laughs> You have a dex of two now as well. So. Oh, great. Oh, well, then I guess you got picked up. You're not being carried around by Laryl. Uh, I'm, I'm burning oh. that second. I've burned two fourth level spots I'm just doing on the, get, the getting under fine. under the chin scratches. <laughs> ah! As you like... <laughs> yeah. no. Um, Why I say... being such a hater about this? I thought we were best friends. Oh, no, 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 no. Okay, first off... Uh, hey, this buddies. is why I stopped being your friend. Rude. Rude on so I'm... many levels. I do you guys want to stay cats? Are you okay as cats? Because this is adorable, but I no? Okay. Uh I'm gonna try and dispel magic on this. Uh what do you need to do? For <laughs> I well I it, mass spelling works like a ninth level spell, right? It is, yeah. Oh great, okay, great. Wow. Uh oh my god. Yeah, you gotta roll for that one. Uh, yeah, I do. I do have to roll for it. Um okay. Uh, uh when you cast a spell using a fourth level or higher. Uh, if the spell is equal or less than levels, so I'm gonna I, I will use a ninth level oh, dispel God. magic. Wow! To God. avoid the to avoid the roll altogether. Um, I'm gonna yeah, attempt to counter spell. Okay, fuck. That's okay. I do not have counter. This is the real combat. This <laughs> yes. is the real initiative. Well, right it, we're keeping the cats counter spell <laughs> magic. This it's a ninth not... level dispel magic. So I mean, okay. So I have to. Let's see. The DC would be ten plus the spell's level. Yeah. Um, you have to get at least a nineteen to dispel. What to do counter... I roll though? Um, uh, just roll a D twenty. Arcana spell casting ability. So an ability yeah. check using spell casting ability. Okay. Oh, and... I have a really good modifier on that. That's okay. what I was scared of. <laughs> I mean, I think we're going to be cats forever. I need to try to counter spell it. Um, you made yourself and... a cat. I didn't tell you to do this that. This is my one ninth level slot, too. So this is great. Well, well. You know, I, I like this. I like where um, this is going. What happens if I rolled exactly a 19? Meets it, my beat it. Meets it beats it, right? Meets it beats it. Okay, right. yeah. So I dispel it and they stay as cats. <laughs> There's a how moment long, where they... St- yeah. How long does your, your true polymorph last? Oh, it's forever. Um, I can have concentration on it for up to an hour. Okay. Okay. All right. Well. So I yeah. like kind of do this to your to your dispel magic. I'm like, stop it! No! No! I made it so much easier. Oh. Look. Oh. Felt bad. Now Kent doesn't feel bad. Kent gets to live as a cute little kitty cat and stop hurting and breaking things everywhere that they go. Ow. Tilly, no, would you like mind going and getting the rest of the biddies and uh? As many people of the North Ward as you could, please. This, yeah. this emergency town hall. Emergency town hall, Tilly, please. Wow, I will just say this is nowhere where I thought this was going to go. <laughs> Can I like illusion, like a giant bell outside the inn? <laughs> yeah. What is it? Yeah. Are you going to try to ring a giant bell? Yeah. Sure. Yeah, I just like. Kind of Does it... ma- major illusion, like a giant silver bell that has my face on it. <laughs> you pick this on the bell. And then <laughs> ring it. You have to act this out. Sweet. 
So yeah, I like create it. And then I like also create like a large mallet in my hand <laughs> and not really knowing how to strike it. Finding melee weapons to be a bit unwieldy. I'm like, and it's like, ting, but then it gets louder and louder and louder and louder as it reverberates through the city. Is it your voice saying ting or is it a proper yes. no, no, ting? Ting, ting. <laughs> Oh my god. Unbelievable. Incredible. I mean meow. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. I, I just I just saw you laugh at the cat Brian. That was yeah. terrifying. That was terrifying. Gosh. Uh and that definitely brings everyone out who's just like, what is happening? At I'm carrying Stall? Faye by like the back of the neck scruff like this. Uh, oh no. Are I you... do not grasp being fine, Faye. Wow. <laughs> Um, Celise is just glaring at you. And she's Do you want I mean, it back? <laughs> wow, you No, and I just kind of look Pat Bay in the face. You deserve everything she does to you. I'm not gonna do anything to Faye. I saved Faye. Because it takes a very evil kind of person to stab a cat. She wasn't a cat when I stabbed her. I know. That's why I turned her into a cat. Look at the toe beans. <laughs> I like dogs more. And I, I whistle for Fenris. Yeah. <laughs> Fenris, though, will not have any compulsion about eating a cat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> mm -hmm. Wow, well, I saw this and disapprove it. It's even worse because you, you the face is following you, Brian. Looks like I'm getting a very disapproving cat stare. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's very, uh... All right. This um, is why cats actually don't have eyebrows, I'm realizing. Uh... <laughs> I know, cats are so cute, though. <laughs> I know. Grumpy cats! It's so <laughs> Uh, oh, podcast wow. listeners, I'm so sorry. Uh, yeah, Brian no. and Please Antonio check out the are video. Both Please cats, you have to check it. out the video. It is oh. really hard to hold this face for the face tracking, too. Like, I'm <laughs> telling you, next season, you should just all be cats. Uh, no, there's, uh, a, I think there's a, isn't there a, yeah, we can talk about it in the post show. There's definitely, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah, we'll yeah. talk about yeah. it. All right, so I'm gonna uh, cast it again and turn the rest of you into other cute creatures. <laughs> I don't have that many to spell magic, please. Um, you all go outside and sleep, and it's it's kind of weird because like there's two cats that weirdly enough, Fenris has allowed Cat and Virgil to like climb on his back. He's being very protective of you as cats. Um, the others are walking outside, and Celise, you know that kind of iconic John Wick moment where he's like covered in blood and he's murdered like oh, face yeah. everyone. That's the least, except it's just a spray of Faye's blood on her face and her sword. Mm. Um, and Shaka, since you're worried about it, she is very much not okay. She's like this close to kind of just going on a rampage. Yeah, Shaka, he's... I'm keeping my eye on you for sure, but I don't think I'm really going to say anything at this point. Um yeah, just because I I'm 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 walking close enough so that you know I'm there, but I'm not uh, gonna initiate any conversation at this point. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, after Laryl, you have summoned everyone with the melodious ting from your voice and your bell, and you are holding this angry little cat. Everyone is gathered in the town square outside Trollskull Manor, wondering what exactly the fuck is going on. I am going to sort of like entreat them, you know, I mold earth like a little podium for myself and walk up it <laughs> ceremoniously. Oh man, that's a good use of magic. <laughs> and then stand at the top of these like little beautiful wooden or earthen steps I've made. And I'm just like, lovely denizens of water deep. Today, we are gathered here to determine the fate of the rivals. Now, I will not deny that these adventurers haven't done good things for the city, but today we're determining whether or not these deeds are outweighed 
by their extensive criminal records, as well as the bad things they've done in the city. So, I will lay it before you, because I am nothing if I'm not fair, the court of public opinion. Oh, well. You get to decide today whether or not they get to live the rest of their lives as cute little furry creatures like this one that will no longer be able to met harm onto others. Or whether we shall leave them to their own devices as your neighbors in a city where you will have to dwell and be exposed to the consequences of their actions. Today we're determining whether or not the rivals are indeed worthy of the power that they wield and whether or not they should continue to possess it. But I will say, take a look at how cute they are this way and just think about that when you're deciding. <laughs> and just I, petting Faye. <laughs> yes. I also uh -oh. like the idea that it wasn't like banished from Waterdeep. No, you get turned into cats. That's the pun. That is not yeah, the pun. Cats or... and mice and sure, other sure. cute things. God. I am chaotic good, okay? Mm -hmm. I would never just... <clears throat> I'll even let you pick. You know what? <laughs> wow. <laughs> I'll even let you decide. Uh, so, Dahani, since you summoned the biddies, mm -hmm. please, if you would like to voice biddies. Sure. Yes. yes. Yeah, no, that's fine. Um, let's see. Since you are the one that gave me the, the accent I had to do at the beginning of the season. That's yeah. that's okay. Um, let's see. Knowing what I know about the biddies having created them. Uh, so Tilly, who lives down the street from the rivals, uh, who's the one that um, who's the one that that Dahani summoned, she says, Well, I mean, they are very rambunctious little people, but they have good hearts and their intentions are always good and i since the since the very first town hall that we've had with them we've seen a lot of improvement in the north ward aside from that little incident with the building but things have been very good i see the bird she goes out and she plays with the kids and she takes them on flights and things like that and the one in the 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 white bucket hat he comes over all the time for cookies and though he continuously tries to get me to sell the cookies at the, the manor it's, sweetheart it's not going to work you need to stop asking i'll bake you as many cookies as you want now but you you have to stop asking me to sell them Ah, uh, yes, their brave okay. capitalism strikes again it's a redistribution of goods you hear a gazer from the corner just fuming. Um, and she looks around at the other biddies who you know for a fact live in way farther parts of Waterdeep than was fast enough for them. But you don't know how they got here so fast. Um, mm -hmm. um, and she says, all in all, we don't have a problem with them. And I think, um, actually, I'm going to, if it's okay, I'm going to roll a d20 for, like, general persuasion for the people around the biddies. Sure. Okay. That's a 14. This is straight 14. Okay. Um, these are just general common town folk. They're listening. Um, there's some people who are still kind of iffy about the rivals, but they are, they respect the biddies. Mm -hmm. So they are listening to them. Um, Rivals have the respect of the of the North Ward elders. Is there in the crowd? Can I see if Zephyr is there or anyone else from like the Temple of Gong? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. uh, specifically, uh, Nimrods is invested in Zephyr and his developments and his like. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And Brian is here. And Brian is here, right? Yeah. Uh, Brian the Brain is here. Yeah, mm -hmm. like Zephyr. Well. I would assume he's here. Um, because <laughs> if you're like, 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 built like, like a built his body. Yeah. Yeah. Built his body. Uh, yeah. We'll say that they're out there. Okay. Um, and then I, I will pet Fenris, Virgil, and Kent, and then walk up and say, Ow. 
<laughs> Sorry, buddy. Uh, once I take a nap, I'll be able to get the spot back. Like, I got you. Just trust me. Uh, I, I step forward no. and I say, and we have also been doing things for the betterment of our city, for our ward. I mean, Zafir, if you'd be so kind, I know Nimrods, the new investment management for the rivals of Waterdeep, we have done a lot for some of your development about making easier social access to some of our citizens for gaining just better artificial artificer tools for those in the community um, and reducing the barrier to entry to have access to this sort of uh, these goods. Um, may I speak for Zafir also as his creator? <laughs> Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> All my NPCs are returning. What's yeah, going yeah, on yeah, here? Yeah. I'm gonna ask um, you. Uh, up next, we'll have you do Waldo too, just for fun. <laughs> God dang it! You gotta do Waldo, man. I can't. Do, I can't I'll do Waldo. Um, Fuck. <laughs> well, the, the fear he roll. They they roll forward um, in their um, in their their wheelchair, and they say, "Yeah, I mean, uh, they've helped me a lot with my like." artificial art I was gonna say artificial artificer advances I mean like I built Brian like they've actually even helped with uh you know like accessibility like I can get to a whole lot of places a lot easier thanks to some of the like they put money into the city that builds me better infrastructure I can I can move around better I don't have to like wait outside a building I can just walk in because there's like a ramp now that's great see I mean not it, it was for the citizens for the people of the north ward because yes we know that our power intimidates some individuals and it draws attention and frankly we just hope that since troll skull disappeared into avernus and then re-emerged we have made this promise with you all about showing you that we're being more conscious and caring of our home. All I ask is for the folks here, have you seen that change? Have we proven to you that we are committed to this growth? And that that's the persuasion role I want to make, is that like, mm. since being aware of the impact, have we tried <laughs> to rectify? All right, is this a persuasion, mass persuasion? I, it, it, it would be cool if I had that spell. Nah, this is just a persuasion. Um, Can he have advantage because everybody is saying good things about us? Look I have a these. plus 11 to my persuasion, so I feel like my opening address was probably pretty polarizing. It's pretty strong. <laughs> it is pretty strong. Well, you know what? No, no, no. I, I will sure. burn another third slot. I have my last <laughs> third level spell. To give me enhance ability right before I said what I said to give myself oh, advantage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'll, yeah I'll, I was totally like, well, that. that's a good argument for advantage. We're not going to do it. No, 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 no. Okay, the first one <laughs> is a two, which is why oh, we go. Wow. Second okay. one's a 15. Second one is a 15. Pretty, it was, you know, 14, 15. I do like this like subtle improvement of yeah. the, the audience swing. Uh, you see some heads nod as you say that. Not this isn't like everybody's suddenly like, yay, rivals, get out Laryl. But you see more people like, yeah, yeah, he's got a point. He's got a point. Uh, Laryl, please give me a check to see if you're maintaining concentration. You keep mm, them as cats. Yeah. Let's see. That's because you you are trying to sway the crowd. You're managing this angry little mm -hmm. fae that's now a cat. Just got some um, psychic got damage from that argument. 15. Uh, you've lost concentration because you're so focused on trying to disrupt Gazer's argument. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Your uh, polymorph does drop. Yeah, as it so, does, and I see that like Faye is now a, you know back to not being a cat. I I drop them, and I'm just like, oh. well, Faye, what do you think? I think it's only fair mm -hmm. that your voice be heard in this scenario. Uh, and you see Faye, like, is crumpled on the ground, yeah. holding, <laughs> holding, like, her her wounds, because she run through with a Holy Avenger log yeah. sword. Yeah. And she's just, and like, I, laying I there. Like keep it there, because it's very good for my argument. Mm -hmm. Especially since you were exposed to the savagery of a member of this party. 
please, please. And Faye's just like, you said you'd protect me. I did. She almost killed me. Oh, and then I pat. That me. There's so much there, there. I love it. So on the lighted. back, and I'm gonna do um, cure wounds. Okay. <laughs> this heals for forty hit points. Okay. Ow. All right. That that helps. It actually it's a heavy pet. I think right? back up. <laughs> it's it's um emotional healing. He's almost <laughs> back to full health. Yeah. But and but she's, as Laryl she does this, she's just like. I wasn't gonna let anything happen to you. I got run through. I needed to see what kind of actions your your if Celeste can treat someone that they love like this. I mean, imagine what sort of violence as they unleash on people they dislike. <laughs> as you say that, you just hear the swing of a bow being drawn. No. If I may. Yeah. So, Laryl Silverhand, you're saying that you deliberately put a citizen of Waterdeep in harm's way to prove a point? <gasps> oh, no, rather the opposite. But as we can see by the bow being drawn, Celise put Faye in harm's way. Had I known that you were not even open or amiable to such deliberations i never would have you didn't find ask it us interesting. i find it interesting to honey that you think that merely by sending fey into your establishment i was putting them in harm's way do you mean to therefore insinuate that that Celise is a danger to themselves and others because i feel like that's what you're saying uh, so, just taking so you agree with me then i go for honey <laughs> Yeah, yeah Dahani, is, Dahani is like you see Dahani's head feathers like get fluffy yeah. as she realizes that the argument has been turned on her, but also she's impressed. Mm -hmm. Wow, debate club Jasmine just jumped out. I That's know it's it very impressive. I was like. Gazric as the barrister from last episode is like, oh, so that's okay. So that's good counsel. All right, got it. Does the crowd react to this? They're just like, oh, you're right. Remember how she attacked the castle lanterns? Uh, what was the castle lantern she terrorized? I forgot. Oh, um, oh uh, the, the new one. Highlock. Yeah. Okay. Highlock, yeah. Highlock. Yeah. Highlock. yeah. Um, um, but Celise at that point is just, she's just like, is speaking like that very controlled. If I, if I don't measure myself, I will scream. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You used emotional manipulation you send someone into our midst and let her use me and when i learn of her betrayal you're trying to make it out that i am the danger is this really what you're doing right now oh i didn't send Faye. it was all Faye's idea inside Faye. check i it, highly doubt that yeah, yeah everyone inside, 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 inside check uh, uh yeah, and let us list. know what if that insight will be because i have i also have something in my pocket Jesus, for who it could be. thank you what what it got it's e that? either i get a two or i get a 30 and i got a 30 oh wow <laughs> 19 plus 11 yeah 22 here yeah. 12 14 <laughs> 16 also i so, turned to oh yeah no please oh no so it was um it was Faye's idea, but also a couple other people. But please, with those inside checks, Laryl, what do you, what is it that you're going to do now? Because they see right through you, mm. especially with that 30. I think in Laryl's mind, she doesn't think she's lying. Like mm -hmm. in, in her head, it's like, well, no, this was, you know, I didn't mm. coerce anybody into doing this. They did it willingly. I wasn't being sneaky. Right. Like all think... of her actions are to test the metal and the morality of people. Same thing with like, like sending Faye in. Like she truly was like, mm -hmm. well, this will, you know, like clearly she wouldn't be in danger unless these people were bad people. And then mm -hmm. Faye would be in danger, you know, mm -hmm. like in her mind, it's like all of your actions are just uh, proving her right, right in some way. Okay. Mm -hmm. I also Sorry. think you would notice um, 
at least like the, you you all would notice that uh Laryl probably is trying to see how Celise acts under pressure slash anger. And it's not necessarily that Laryl's trying to make Celise angry. It's more so that Laryl is curious whether Celise's anger always results in violence. And so mm. she's like kind of testing that a bit. Hmm. Huh. Uh, she's like a mad scientist. I mean, yeah. this, is, this is devious. Okay. All it's right. respectful yeah. though and infuriating. Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah now that oh go ahead. Um I was gonna say, like, especially now that they're no longer cats, I, I wanna turn to uh, yeah, I wanna turn to the first husbands of the North Ward. People that oh, like, yeah. we, we had like sort of within rivals were like, no, you all will be our spokespeople. You all will be the folks who, because we think that you have a better control of the, just talking to people than this guy. So uh, I think Gazer just like turns to them and say, sorry, I couldn't uh, fix that sooner. I tried, I really tried, um, but she is really good. She's really good at what she's doing and she's really good at making us look bad. I don't know what else to say, but I figured if anyone was to speak on the rival's behalf, it should be someone who knows the pain of losing their home, like myself, and making Waterdeep the new one. The idea of someone who was able to redefine them themselves here, unbeknownst to anything that they carried prior. And individuals who's truly come to champion. And for us, the best of the North Pole. Um, so no pressure. Y'all got it. You all, you all do great. What's the vibe check of the crowd at this point? Now that yeah. you can see with people um, eyes. <laughs> so the vibe check is, you've got about a 70-30 split in favor of the rivals. And they're, they're currently focused on Laryl. And Selyse was very intentionally pointing an arrow at Faye and not at Laryl. Mm -hmm. okay. She is she is laser focused on on her now ex because they they ain't no coming back after this. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> um, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So she is laser focused arrow at the ready, but she's also it's like XCOM when you're this close to something and you try to shoot it. This is more for show and to like do something until the the crowd disperses. So So first husbands, what do you have to say for yourself? Um, yeah, Virgil, yeah, just <clears throat> very calmly and, you know, kind of standing up and just stroking, uh, stroking Fenris. We admitted when we were wrong. We admitted when we had stepped out of line, we came to you, the people of the North Ward and of Waterdeep, to explain that our actions had brought harm. And we discussed a plan to tone and amend. And I, while still fairly new to the city, would be willing to bet that this is the first time you have ever even encountered Laryl in person, let alone heard her address you directly. However, everything she has said is right. But you must understand that while she did view us as perhaps predators that needed to be around to protect prey, in that very statement, she has tacitly approved of our presence this entire time. While all we have done is talked to you and offered to help and asked you what you needed. I cannot say what her motivations are. I do not know what her plan is for the future. I do know that we will maintain our promise to take responsibility for what trouble comes to us or what trouble we bring. But you have access to us. You have spoken to us and continue to, and we 
we promise that that will never change. And if it does one day, then we'll want to hear that from you. I can't promise that we'll always do exactly what's best for you. We will try right now. I've made mistakes. And I believe that Laryl thinks this is what's best. I believe that she is trying to solve a problem that she finds. And maybe one day we will be that problem. And maybe she is proof of that. Meryl Silverhand has been the open lord of Waterdeep for some time. She has protected the city. She has helped us. She has protected us. She is the daughter of the goddess of magic. But I look out and I see all of you appreciating us. And I hear the kind words from people who have lived here much longer than I have. And I see that we have done good. And if Laryl can't see that, then maybe she has come to a point in her power and her influence where the reality of the situation is too clouded by her control over it and her desire to maintain that control, good intentioned as it may be. And one day we may get there. We are powerful adventurers. And I can't promise that as we continue to grow in power, we will always be able to see things as clearly as I think we do now. But Virgil is correct. We've started something here in listening to you, in meeting with you, in building this community. And we'll always keep that. We will always listen. And, and I... I was ready to leave. I believed that the good that I could do this place had stopped outweighing the bad. But seeing you all here, maybe it hasn't yet. And maybe it will one day. But for now, we are here by your grace and we'll stay as long as you'll have us. And I hope that you'll see that we are not the ones who are not clearly seeing the present situation. That we are not the ones putting the city in danger. I think like this kind of sways Layla. And she says, well, maybe there's something in between you being banished from Waterdeep forever or having to live out your life as small animals. Would you agree, Kent, that your desire is to prevent being the very forces of oppression that is sometimes what you have become, and that you would much rather help the people of Waterdeep? Yes. Yes, I have, like I said, we've made mistakes. But yes, it is help. It is protection. It is what Shaka said, too. Troubles will come to Waterdeep, and I want to be here. To give up a small vestige of your power to do so? If you could convince me that by reducing my power, I could still be a, an effective protector of this city, and if the city will still have me, yeah. I think you're right. Perspective is something that's valuable. And maybe you're correct, Dahani, that in my tower, I lack it. Therefore, if you were to become my counselors, you would have to have the perspective of the commoner. So, 
if I were to use my abilities to take a vestige of your power and here before your business create a font of magic an eternal silver flame that would provide people with unlimited food and water and healing till the end of days would you all agree to it even if it meant you would have to live your lives as common adventurers instead of the masked lords of Waterdeep? In a heartbeat. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Doc is the last one to say yes, but he does say yes. <laughs> but if he we are, about it. but if we are to give so much up and to be your counselors, there can be no more of this. I know that emotions and confrontation and conflict can be difficult. You and I deflect them in different ways, but we both can deflect them quite, quite efficiently. There can be no more of that between us. We must understand all seven of us that we're here for the betterment of this city. And when we come to you, you listen. And when you have concerns, you come to us. I think I could make that change. You made a very cute cat. And I think if I just always picture you as a cat, it'll make it easier for me to confront you. My therapist told me to picture people naked, and honestly, that just made it worse. I've been told that too, and it does, doesn't it? It really does. Does mm. it? I mean, worse in the <laughs> moment, it doesn't fix the situation. I think you and I may have different reasons that it makes it worse. And this is neither here nor there. So we can get you a cat, Laurel, if that'll help. <laughs> <laughs> Do you want like an emotional support cat? <laughs> maybe all this, all of this will be solved if you had a cat in your. Uh, I think that's actually a, a great moment of. Just, let's go around the horn. Tahani said yes. Shaka said yes. Kent said yes. Virgil said yes. Gosrick said yes. You, yeah, it, incredible social services There's, for all these. We're still, yeah. yeah, we're still basically having a frozen, it, frozen in time moment over here mm -hmm. on the fringes yeah. with the, yeah. uh, with the. Uh, Bodron Solis. Yeah. Yeah. I guess everyone would turn to look to you, Solis. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Awkward. Mm -hmm. uh, very. And Solis has been listening. She's been paying rapt attention. Mm -hmm. She's just been focused to make sure the Fae doesn't take a step away from her. Right. Yeah, yeah. Take the mask. I don't care. Whatever you need to do. How about you just turn this one back into a cat forever? She might be useful then. It's that or I kill her. Or betraying me worse than you could ever understand, Laurel. I think Gazer wants to take a moment to put their hand on uh, Salisa's elbow. Are you sure yeah. you want to do that? Yeah, 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 yeah. I think so. Uh, I cannot imagine the pain that you're dealing with right now. Um, no, I can, I can imagine it, but I don't think I would do justice to what you are probably actually feeling. I care about you a lot, and I want you to know I have your support in whatever you choose to do. But I've seen you survive through the loss of one loved one. And I don't want you to have to deal with that struggle and be the cause of it this time. Self-vendetta may not serve you the way handling Zaraj did. Salise is just silent. She's just staring down at Faye, who's basically just 
collapse at that point. And she's just, you don't understand. You don't understand at all. I don't. Brian, I sent you a message in chat. But Celise, what she did is unforgivable, but if it makes us better able to protect the city, don't forgive her. But let her go. Oh, forgiveness was not your name. No, nor should it. Because that's who you are. That's who we are. And that's another thing is whatever this vestige of power is that we get up, we are who we are. We are grown adults. We are experienced adventurers. And the violence, the reactions, the instincts that we have may not immediately make sense to everyone else. But it's who we are. And that's okay. But I'm asking you, and I think Gosric is asking you in this moment. At that, assuming that Celise has been frozen and like she's basically been holding the pose of this, mm -hmm. um, just a very subtle, and since Kent and Gosric are both looking at her and would see this, a very subtle glow happens around the bow and arrow. And it's it is sort of like in a flash. Um, the bow is once again at her back. The arrow is in the knock. And Celise simply hears a voice in her, you know, in her ear and in her mind that simply says, This is not how you will take the path before you. If you truly wish to atone, you must be willing to let this rage. It's not unearned. I know. It isn't the same as when I killed Faraj. I see that. But. Celise, you simply cannot continue like this. Your friends can only support you so much. And I. I can only watch you for so often. So question has, so is this is just in her mind or the bow is like back on her back as you watch her? The bow is back on her back and this sort of happened like in a moment, you know, this is sort of like, yes, yeah, this, this conversation between her and Tyr is happening in that moment. Um, he has absolutely taken Faye out of danger in this instant, but it is it is really just between the two of them. So it's like frozen time for the rest of us, kind of. And it, yeah, like, like okay. yeah, you, you all, yeah. So depending, oh wow, I don't like the way I was going to finish that sentence. Depending on how this goes, <laughs> uh, <laughs> my hand like pulls the elbow back and shoots for her. <laughs> um, and you feel the deep sorrow here and she just nods her head she can't really speak in that moment in this conversation with you but the rest of you see her step back and just walk around until she's behind everyone take her away from here before I do something I can't undo and you notice that she's crying and she's just trying to be stoic about it and in that moment, Laryl, you have offered them a boon. Everyone has agreed. What does creating this font look like? Um, yeah, you see her like draw up all of her height and power. And as she does, she begins to form this like almost spectral fountain, a fountain from which if one were to drink, they would enjoy the benefits of a long rest and feel full for a day. And you notice she is also putting her power into this. Some of the color leaves her cheeks 
And all of you get the sense that if you were to come to this fountain and give up a piece of yourself, it would become more real with each and every one of you. Mm-hmm. Love that. Yeah. And do each of you do this? Yeah, I think Kent will step up first with with no hesitation and takes off uh, the cloak clasp, the sort of mithril clasp that he always has on him uh, and looks at Laryl and says, this was the very first soul trinket I ever took. And it has always reminded me to respect death sometimes far more than life. And it was a friend who I know would like to be a part of this. And I'll sort of place it and let whatever power needs to flow through it into the fountain. You see it kind of become unmade in the mm-hmm. way that like Laryl talks about. It's a bit disturbing. Um, oh. And as it's unmade into its base carbon components, um, you see like the fountain become more real and it it takes on almost like a metallic color with marble, like I guess like uh, rivers of silver inlaid in marble and the water, you can almost begin to feel the coolness of the mist as it kind of like showers all of you. I'll step back and let whoever's next. I think I know what Gazard would put in. Um, he steps forward, and from underneath his beard, he pulls out a necklace, and on it is a gold coin. Punch through. Takes it off. This is the first sale I ever made. My very first moment when I harvested an ice spider, brought it back to the frost fell, and traded its skin and meat and fur to sustain myself. It was the first thing that I learned about the notion of doing something for the betterment of the world around you and moving things in order for others to have more than they had before. It is the only piece of the frost fell that I have left. And I wanted to be a part of this home as well. When I flick the coin uh, into the fountain, I walk away. Yeah, this time you all feel like a thrum of arcana, like kind of come cascading out as the coin goes in and Laryl just says money is an important necessity we can use it but we must ensure that we do not become enslaved to it a good token to give up I think um, Dahani waddles forward and as she's going forward she um the sash she wears, she's untying it and she wraps it up and she um like like kind of like so once it's wrapped up, it looks like a muff around her, uh, around her hands, and then she pulls her hands out of it and she like presents it so that it looks really folded up. And um she says, They gave me this when I left Chult as a reminder of where I came from. And I've never taken it off, but I know where I came from. And this is where I am now. And this is where I want to stay. And so like it, she like flings it up and then like the, the seams and the, the threads begin to like unravel and like, you know, find their way into the fountain as well and it's a it's a it's a gold sash with like a honeycomb pattern 
I think as the fountain absorbs it, this time we see small birds, like tropical in nature of all kinds of colors, come and kind of nest in the fountain and begin like bathing themselves in the water. Good. Yes. Um, Shaka will uh, walk forth. Um, he will kind of rummage around the uh, sort of inside of his, um, his robe. And he pulls out what looks like a small little square um, of paper. And he starts to like unfold it and then unfold it. It's almost like a, an origami style, unfolds it like really slowly until it's this very large uh, map. Um, and it has all kind of markings on it. Um, and he looks around, especially to Solis, but to everybody else and says, um, when I first came to Waterdeep, I drew a map of this city that I did not know. Um, and over the years, I've been filling it in with different, uh, different things that I've found out, different things that we've added to, different adventures we've had. Um, I've had this with me. Um, and uh, I have had everyone, um, you know, sort of add to it. So you see little markings that, um, you know, uh, I think only Sleece would probably recognize. I have like uh, Heron's handwriting, Rin's editions, uh, Ashbourne's editions. Um, and he uh, kind of asks everybody to put a marking on it. Um, uh, and you don't have to describe what you put on it if you don't want to, but you could, that'd be cool. Um, and uh, after everybody puts a marking on it, he turns to like a Laurel and says, you know, this is where, um, you know, a marking that has where we first met, um, which has sort of right by the border um, where Laurel uh, kind of imprisoned us when we first came. Uh, to water deep questioned us with uh melanie uh the mayor of nightstone um and says this is a record of everything that we've done but this is just a paper and the real um you know the real like recognition memory is you know all of our experiences and what we remember um so i think i'm ready to part with this to you know give to everyone else um, and he puts this paper in the, in the fountain. I think this time, like a small silhouette sideways, kind of Lord of the Rings spine edition of your characters becomes like, sort of like, um, in, engraved in silver on the side of the fountain in like a repeating pattern. Um, Selyse walks up. She pulls a dagger. It's one you've seen her use a thousand times, especially with Shaka. And she kisses the health of it and then lets it drop slowly. This was something my wife made for me. It was something she knew that I would want and love and I hunted many meals for us and carved many a wooden animal one night spent by the fire, but those days are gone. Waterdeep is where I am now, and the love I have for her will not be sundered just by giving up this thing. And it splashes into the water. As you do this, a ring of benches forms around the statue, each of them with a sort of like side profile relief uh, in the back of the wood of you and your wife's faces facing each other. And That's a lot. Yeah. Got him. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, Virgil, um, oh. Uh, Virgil approaches and actually approaches Kent and, and puts his hand on his shoulder. And then pushes Kent in. Uh. 
Sorry, this is sorry. not this is not that moment. No, <laughs> this is not that moment. No, but I'm sorry. Um, I'm, I'm done. <laughs> and you see you you basically start to see like the air swirl around Virgil's feet and power just starts drawing to him until he actually um he appears in his Atsumar angelic form. Um these bright glowing blue wings appear and and they're incorporeal and his eyes are glowing and there is just this you know you can even see like the weather above has started to swirl around him and he just pauses for a moment and reaches up and and pulls at these normally incorporeal wings and as his hand comes back there is a solid feather and he says the storm and be destructive, but people can still benefit from it. The wind cools, the rain helps. I have always tried to be a protector. This is a symbol of my power and my intent to simply help our new home. And as the power leaves him and the wings vanish, that feather is still there and he he holds it over um, the fountain and, and lets it fall in. This time as it falls in, um, you see like shining shimmering coins collect at the bottom of the fountain and people can willingly give their gold to gain inspiration and people who need money can take it from the fountain. No questions asked. And as you all watch, this fountain is now fully corporeal. It's beautiful. And the people around you just cheer and they clap and they thank all of you for taking care of them, for giving them something that will sustain Waterdeep. You came ready to fight. You came ready to win if need be or possibly lose. And instead, you've created a legacy. And with that, we've ended the season. Well done. Holy well done. cow. Yeah. I'm not crying. Everybody out there is crying. <laughs> <laughs> Maya, I'm the only one with dry eyes in here. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. It's, it's come on. It's okay. Sure. Uh, That's because you're evil. <laughs> <laughs> well, that uh Hey Masood, since uh, since you're the only dry eye and can most can best uh, take this, and yeah. since you just got called evil, <laughs> yeah, we got anything to tell the folks? Yeah, I think that's great. Uh, thank you, Tanya, so much for taking us through a phenomenal 14th season. Thank you all to our fans who've been uh, sticking with us uh, throughout. And uh, a little announcement. I'm back in the GM chair for next season. Uh, bring this energy. It's going to be fun. Uh, who knows? There'll be more intrigue more mystery maybe also um some more jimmy buffett vibes if you oh, thought our live show at gen con oh, no. um, no. we'll see we'll see what ends up turning out <laughs> uh but we will be what was the official date that we settled on february uh, in oh, early february it. early february early february, early february you'll catch early february. Back yes. sundays here uh from 12 to 2 central do the conversions for yourself. I trust you. You can handle that. Um, but yeah, I'm really excited. It's going to be great um, to be with these wonderful individuals as we ride through um, to the tail end of the rival story. Yeah, it's exciting. And I, yeah. um, wow, I'm hugely inspired by yeah. where we've ended mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, and I also. Yeah deeply want to sit on it in the right way yeah. and like talk to you all about like what we're thinking. <laughs> that, that's, we're we'll talk about it in the post show. We'll talk about it. We're going to have to talk about this. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. absolutely. Um, um, yeah. So we've gone over, but that was not a place where you could be like, okay, it's two o'clock. No, right. no. No. Hey, we're on our own. We ain't corporate sponsored no more. So we do what we want. <laughs> Get out of there. Yeah. Um, <laughs> 
Can I just say before we, and this may be what you were about to say, Tanya, but before we start thinking about our 15th season, my goodness, thank you, Jasmine. Yeah. Oh, thank you yes. so much. oh my uh, God. What oh an my incredible God. appearance to help us round out 14. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Thank you so I, much. I have struggled so much with when I've DM with how to think about Laurel, like how someone in her position would act. Mm -hmm. And I feel like you did like a fantastic job of showing all these different dimensions of yeah. her mm -hmm. from silly to serious to like conflicted, like all in like, what, like you, you did like a season character art for a character. <laughs> <in> <laughs> one episode. It was nice. like thank incredible. You. So thank you, thank you yeah. so much. It was so much fun. It was such an honor to be a part of your season finale. Yes. And I'm so happy we didn't have a TPK combat or something like that. <laughs> oh yeah, because no, you would have wrecked us. Yeah. <laughs> the moment my spell is my like, oh, I'm gonna spell their magic and they counterspell Ooh. it immediately. I was like, okay, I'm outclassed. We understand. <laughs> <laughs> Um, uh, we did go over. So what I'm going to ask is, do we want to do questions? Do we want to just kind of wrap and then take a quick break? And then, uh, we'll, we'll have a longer, um, post show, I show? think, but I think we all need a break and some water. Yeah. And then yeah, let's yeah, do our yeah. Uh, I would say yeah. Yeah. if anybody, if anybody has character, um, if anyone has character questions, um, why don't you, well, we could. Oh, are we going to do questions? Because I thought maybe we, we could, could, we could take them. Yeah. We could take them, but we may be able to put those out on social media. Because, yeah. I think that's yeah. Okay. yeah. Tweet yeah. questions yeah. at us at Rivals oh, there you go. on Twitter. Yeah, there we there go. go. Tweet them. Even Super better. Easy. Um, And be sure that you say who the question's for. And then if uh anything is for bronze, as well as silver hand, please make sure that you tag bronze. Yeah, but that's been our season. I'm going to go be a crying mess for um, thank you, Jasmine. This was amazing. Thank you. Yes. Yes. So much fun. All right, we're going to go in reverse order for outros. So we're going to start with Masood and go around. Hey, everyone. I'm Masood Huck. You can find me on Instagram and Twitter at Maroodboy, M A H R U D E B O I. I'm here with these wonderful folks doing rival stuff. Um, I'm in Chicago doing a bunch of acting and comedy biz. If you want to see more of what I'm up to or just see pictures of my cat, Check me out on social media. All right, Brian. Uh, hi, yeah, I am Brian. Uh, you can pretty much find me everywhere as Urban Bohemian. Uh, you could, you could, well, until today, you'd see me with these awesome folks on Sundays uh, and on my own channel. But I am blessedly with a clear calendar through the end of the year. I am going Good to enjoy taking you. time away. Um, and yeah, I look forward to what 2023 brings. You and you. Hi, everybody. I'm Eugenio. You can find me at DM Jazzy Hands on the Twitter and the Twitch. Uh, I, too, am pretty much done for the year. I think we'll, I'll be back uh, maybe the Thursday before New Year's. But uh, Sam and I are going to visit family and I'm disconnecting and it's going to be great. So this was a really good way to finish off uh, my streaming before the break. Um, yeah, like I said, I'll be back right before the new year. I think I'll be doing, keep an eye on the socials. I think I'm doing a charity, uh, event on new year's day, uh, which will be really cool. So keep an eye for news about that as we come out. But, um, yeah, deuces. I'm out for a little while. <laughs> uh, Sharif. Hey y'all, you could catch me at sharifjackson.com. S H A R E E F Jackson.com. Sharif Jackson on all social networks. My classes are done. Uh, I finished grading, so I am uh, completely off from teaching for the rest of the year. Uh, and excited to uh, start up the next season uh, of Rivals uh, early February. Super excited. Latia. Hi, uh, you can find me everywhere at Latia Jaquis. Um, I got nothing. It's about to be the end of the year. I, I'm, I am emotionally destroyed right now. Yeah. Uh, I think I can kind of speak for everybody on that note. Um, but yeah, if you if I have any news, you can find me on Twitter uh, tell, talking about that until uh, the violin stop playing. <laughs> yes. Hi, I'm that bronze girl. You can find me everywhere at that bronze girl. Um, yeah, I play D and D Tuesday nights um, with the Shikar cast, and I'm also doing Last Call for Adventure on Wednesdays. And that's it. That's me. I'm a writer. I write for Motherlands. I write for Critical Role. Mm -hmm. Writing for other NDA stuff, and sometimes I shoot things with uh, the College Humor crowd at Dimension Twenty. That's it. That's a me. Yay! I'm uh, 
Because <laughs> <laughs> if you didn't, I was going to have to, and it'd be weird. Uh, uh, and I've been your DM. I'm Cypher Pierre on the internet. I too am free from everything but one small writing project for the end of the year. And then I'm going to do nothing, talk to no one, and pretend <laughs> the internet does not exist until next year. Yeah. Um, but yeah, but catch me on my channel. I'll be playing probably The Witcher and Out the Next Gen remake is out. More Data Boy. There's too many games, not enough me, and uh, thanks for playing Pirate. I'm now getting into Warhammer. So <laughs> <I'm not laughs> it's the time. Oh, it's the time. Geez. Yes. Uh <laughs> I so. just bought more. Join us. Join us. <laughs> <laughs> I can't reach it, but uh, on on the tweeters, I I pirate got me the, one of the starter sets, so nice. I'm now part of the wow. Warhammer 40k crew. So it's been nice Woo! knowing you all. It's been nice having money. <laughs> Not gonna have any of it now. No time. No money. No social life. Only Warham. Yeah. <laughs> so Not even Warhammer. Warham. 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 So you and Pirate will now get random texts from me. Why did I do this to myself? <laughs> uh, but that's it. We're done till next year. Please have a happy and safe holiday. If you celebrate, if you don't enjoy whatever you're doing between now and January 1st, mm -hmm. we'll have a good break, hopefully. But we're oh. going to go. Yes. I was going to remind her my birthday is on January 8th. She will be off, but just so you all remember. Uh, you'll, <laughs> you have the Twitter. You'll tweet it. Anyway. I'll tweet it out. Yeah. yeah I'll you tweet it don't, don't you have a gift yeah. for this? Dude, if you're I dropping hints. Yeah, no, not a gift for this because he doesn't know how to use gifts. A, I, I, I'm learning. I'm not the old man I thought I was. I'm Gifify. Okay. Gifify. You got to go to the Gifify. Yeah, I got to go know. to Gifify. And, and now there's it on a, mobile. I got to do it on the computers. Okay. There yeah. is a gift of Gifify now. It is. Raided there is forever. it's great <laughs> yes uh but yes we're gonna go raid uh imperial friend of the channel friend of many of us in this mm -hmm. stream i don't know if she's doing crafting or gaming today but we're gonna go say hi to imperial we're gonna go emotionally decompress and cry <laughs> and <laughs> so see you uh next year later y'all bye y'all peace bye.